morning, Sam. Good morning. So hi, everyone. Welcome to our Working From Home conversation. Today, we are talking with IJM, which is the International Justice Mission. And we are talking with Sam. Hi, Sam. Um, Hello. Thank you for joining us all the way from the Philippines. You are the Vice President of IJM Philippines um, and, and in charge of the OSEC Hub, which is the online sexual exploitation of children. So um, take it away, Sam. Please tell us a bit about yourself and you know, what you're doing for IJM and, and everything that's going on at the moment. Yes, thank you for having me. So I have been with International Justice Mission or IJM for about 17 years now. I started as a litigator of cases involving children, working or work with the police on uh, various rescue operations, prepared child survivors for their legal proceedings. I think that was the favorite part of my, my job, walking along, alongside survivors in their journey towards seeking justice for themselves and for others. And it's such a joy to be able to participate in that. So now I am managing IGEMS program in addressing the online sexual exploitation of children in the, in the Philippines and hopefully even beyond our borders where this issue might be emerging next. So I've been uh, with uh, IJM uh, again for about 17 years now and IJM in the Philippines has been working with uh, the Philippine government for close to 20 years. So we started our program in the Philippines addressing sex trafficking of children in establishments and in the streets since 2001. Wow. Can you tell us a bit about sort of some stories that you work with when you work with survivors? Yes, again, um, I really love uh, my time, especially when I started working on those individual cases where I got to engage with survivors uh, from the point of rescue all the way through their legal proceedings. And of course, we collaborated or I collaborated with social workers in their journey towards healing and restoration. Again, as I've said, that's the favorite part of my job. And so I started really as, um, as a prosecutor, collaborating with government prosecutors. So the, we prepared these survivors as they uh, speak in court or even uh, preparing them uh, in terms of how they communicate their stories uh, in court. I mean, I can remember clearly, you know, the boldness and courage of the survivors as they speak in front of uh, the, the court and even uh, in, on many occasions in front of the perpetrators. And so that gives me a lot of confidence and also boldness in pursuing these cases. So I love that part of my job. I remember just, uh, you know, sensing a lot of hope uh, in these cases. Well, we love hearing hope. So that's fantastic to start this um, working from home conversation with hope. We love that, Sam. Um, so I, we were lucky enough on um, Wednesday to um, join in on your IJM's webinar, which was all about your report that you've just launched um, about how to end online exploitation of children or OSEC, as we've been talking about in the Philippines. Um, and you've launched a major study into the nature and the scale of OSEC. Um, and can, can you briefly explain to our listeners, you know, exactly what OSEC is, and what are the main findings of the report and, and you know, a little bit about that? I would love to. Um, so we have defined um, OSEC or the online sexual exploitation of children as a production for the purpose of online publication or transmission of visual depictions. So that includes photos, videos, or live streaming of the sexual abuse or expo exploitation of a child for someone who is not in the physical presence of the victim in exchange for, for money. So as you can imagine, OSEC is a subset of this broader internet-based child sexual exploitation category. So basically, the same technology that we often use to connect with families and friends, uh, during, especially during this pandemic, has allowed for vulnerable children to be exploited in new and unspeakable ways. So online predators, again, sexual predators don't have to leave the comfort of their own homes to abuse children, but instead use online platforms. Basically the platforms, again, that we get to use to connect with friends, to wire money to traffickers, 
and direct the live sexual abuse of children for their personal viewing. So some of the critical findings of the study confirm many of the things that practitioners in this, in this space already knew. Like for example, the Philippines being the global hotspot for this type of crime. Uh, while it's so difficult to determine exactly the prevalence of OSEC in the Philippines, there were indicators that show that, again, the Philippines is a global hotspot. For example, the estimated number or prevalence rate of IP address, addresses used for child sexual exploitation each year more than tripled between 2014 and 2017. And um, again, we found uh, so many things there uh, that are so helpful or useful even as we intervene on behalf of these children. We've seen that it involves very young children. The average age is 11 years old. So think about prepubescent girls and boys being victimized online. The youngest that we have rescued was a three-month-old infant. Oh my God. Again, very young children uh, abused in, in this crime type. And also very sadly, uh, they are abused at the hands of their parents, family members, or trusted family friends. So that's about 69% or in nearly three quarters of our cases involve traffickers who are the victim's parents, family member, or trusted family friend. How are you seeing COVID change um the work that you're doing and are you seeing it an increase in a lot of this online content or is it changing and is it affecting the way that you do your job so the lockdowns have created unfortunately a perfect opportunity for criminally minded traffickers and sexual offenders to abuse children online considering now that they have more access to these children as these children are confined or quarantined in their homes. And also, uh, there are more barriers to detection because the victims have less or, no, or even no access to other members in the community, like, for example, teachers to whom uh, they might be able to disclose the abuse or display indications of being abused. So on the demand side as well, many offenders are now working remotely, giving them more hours in the day to prey on and abuse children. And also there's kind of like this less oversight as they would not usually do it while in the office or in a work setting. Um, and you know, various law enforcement um, agencies around the world have already sounded the alarm. Um, great example is uh, UK's National Crime Agency warned that at least 300,000 people in the UK might exploit the situation to sexually abuse children either through physical, physical contact or online. And a lot of others um, saying that, for example, again, Europol released a report citing an apparent increase in the demand for child sexual exploitation materials in some of their member countries since the COVID-19 crisis began. I guess in a strange way, I mean, the world now has gone online so much more because you're not allowed to travel and therefore content is something that people are over consuming right now. I mean, it's it's crazy looking at social media. I, I don't know, this is obviously, we're talking about the dark web here, I imagine, but you know, this is sort of the content that's just gone through the roof. I think, yeah, you, you are right. Um, and we're not even talking about the dark web here. These are surface, you know, web platforms where uh, these materials are also being exchanged. So uh, one um, data is coming from the Philippines itself Again, while OSEC is a difficult measure, a uh, difficult crime to, to measure, there are very strong indications of a spike of these incidents as reported by the Department of Justice Office of the Cybercrime. So cyber tips, cyber tips of child sexual exploitation in the Philippines, including distribution, uh, just like what we said, and consumption of material tripled in the first three months of this year, corresponding with the global lockdown. Has the lack of travel meant that there's less physical trafficking going on during COVID? I can't really um, say that at, at this point uh, because there are also still domestic uh, trafficking that happens um, uh, in, in, in local communities, but clearly international travel because of the restrictions 
and the lockdowns, um, then that has probably or potentially, uh, you know, prohibited you know these uh, sexual predators from from flying. But uh, you know, even based on our former project, you know, trafficking can still happen within local communities. Yeah, as you said, the, the parents are, are, could be doing it as well. So, you know, have you been able to continue the work that IGM does um, in the Philippines to help to help rescue sort of children from online abuse or children from trafficking um, because of COVID? I mean, what's happening now? What is it, What are the state of affairs? You know, IGM continues to work with our partners in the police, uh, social welfare offices and prosecutors. Um, and, and in fact, uh, during the lockdowns, our uh, team has worked with them in eight rescue operations. And of course, even before working on those rescue operations, we provided them uh, you know, protective gears to ensure that they are safe, even as they go into the, these communities to extract and rescue these, these children from uh, these abusive or exploitative uh, environments. And, uh, and just like what I mentioned, um, we conducted uh, and collaborated with the police in rescuing uh, eight, uh, uh, in rescuing children, um, when um, about um, let me see, 29 victims rescued actually in these eight rescue operations, and five suspects arrested. So this is an incredible, incredible um, feat for our partners uh, in the criminal justice system. I think it is very important for people to understand that even in the midst of the, the lockdowns and the restrictions that there is a functioning criminal justice system that help is on the way for these children and that criminals will be caught, will not get away with their crimes. I think that's an important message that you know, these criminals uh, should hear, that there is a functioning criminal justice system to protect children from uh, this exploitation and abuse. Wow, I love that you've managed to do eight rescues and 29 victims. That's amazing that you're doing it. It sounds like IGM is sort of, you know, it's this overarching system where you, you filter in down to work with the people on the ground in the different countries that you work in who are like the criminal justice system or whoever it is, lawyers, judges, you know, it sounds like you're giving sort of an overarching um, sort of attention to those people in the countries that you need. That's right. Um, our model of justice system transformation includes working with various governments where we are uh, in rescuing and restoring survivors, holding the suspects and perpetrators accountable in local courts, and also working with local authorities to identify weaknesses in the public justice system and build capacity so that they are actually working to protect vulnerable people from, from violence. And I say this is a replicable model that have led to actual reduction in violence. Like for example, our program in the Philippines from 2001 to 2016, which I also had the, the privilege of being a part of in addressing sex trafficking of children in establishments and streets, where we have seen an average of 80% reduction in the prevalence of the crime in our areas of operation. So what we have seen there is that when violent offenders like the traffickers are consistently held accountable for their crimes by the functioning justice system, the abuse of vulnerable victims is dramatically reduced. So people are less likely to commit crimes, especially financially motivated crimes, including OSEC, if they think that there is a high risk that they will get caught. So when you replace impunity with accountability, we protect more children from violence. Sam, what is your advice to our listeners in the role that they can play to support the work that you're doing or to combat human trafficking more, more globally? Well, definitely um, everyone has a role to, to play here. Um, individuals, corporations, tech companies. I, you know, I mentioned tech companies because um, you know, currently live streaming is not being detected and so it's not being reported. So there is this gap that needs to be filled for tech companies to be able to use their platforms uh, to be able to develop tools to detect um, online sexual exploitation of children. But also at the same time, just ordinary people. 
like influencers, user platform to raise awareness about this issue of online sexual exploitation of children, not just in source countries like the Philippines, but also in demand side countries in the Philippines, because clearly this is a global issue and requires a global stakeholder response. We cannot just um, solve the issue in the Philippines. It has to be um, done in collaboration with various global stakeholders, including demand side countries, like for example, the UK, where uh, this crime is clearly fueled by the demand from Western countries. And so I would really just encourage everyone to use whatever platform, raise awareness about the issue. And if you are in local communities in the Philippines, try to um, report these incidents to local police. So local police would be able to, uh, you know, to rescue and ar rescue those children and arrest the perpetrators even during this lockdown. Sam, the severity of this problem can be incredibly overwhelming as I'm sure you of all people know. We'd love to ask you to share a story of hope and something positive that's happened either during lockdown or before to share with our listeners. Yes, um, so this is really amazing because just yesterday we've achieved a conviction in a case that IJM helped investigate and prosecute. For me this is so emblematic or symbolic uh, in, on many levels since it represents the darkness and filth of the crime and also the hope and beauty that came out of it. So in April of 2017, IJM supported an investigation conducted, conducted against uh, this accused, now convict, named David Timothy Dickin, an American national, who set up a cyber sex den in a town north of Manila, where he live streamed the abuse of children to online predators across the globe. Deacon's arrest turned out to be one of the largest seizures of its kind in the Philippines at that time where thousands of contacts and images were found in his tablet. Two children were rescued at that time and several others were, um, you know, were, were rescued as a, you know, a follow-up intervention. The case was one of the more complex and difficult cases to prosecute, as you can imagine. But through the perseverance and dedication of our frontline prosecutors, including our IGEM lawyers, yesterday Deacon was convicted and sentenced to life in prison. Oh my God. So that wow. is amazing. That is incredible. Yeah. So also we connected with the survivors who are now reintegrated back into the community as part of their journey towards restoration and informed them about this amazing victory. And of course, they were ecstatic. One exclaimed that she's extremely happy about it, especially that Dickens will not be able to victimize more children like her. So for me, these are sources of encouragement that keeps me going 17 years into this fight. And I truly believe we'll see an, an end to OSEC in our lifetime. And this is one of those moments that just truly affirms that this can happen. And it's just a matter of time as long as we get our acts together as a global community to fight this crime. Wow, many, many congratulations. That's a huge win. Thanks so, much, thank you so much for joining Eugenie and I today for our working from home conversation. I think one of the big takeaways that we've learned is that the online sexual exploitation of children is increasing, especially during times like COVID as we all are working from home and are moving towards more and more online content. As you said, we need to act as a global community. Everyone needs to come together and fight this global pandemic. Thank you for listening. <laughs>